welcome to Face to Face. And today we're going to go to Brazil. We're going to talk about human rights. We're going to talk about the political situation with Brazil and um, with Maria Luisa. Maria Luisa, welcome to uh, Face to Face. Thank you. And thank you so much for, for being here. Um, you, um, you work on human rights for many, many years. You come from Brazil. Uh, and then you work in New York City in the university. Yes. And uh, so you know what's happening, the disastrous news about uh, the new president and the visit of the president to, uh, to the White House meeting with Trump. And then, so do you have any, uh, any comments? Uh, yes, well, I think it's important for people to know that uh, Brazil is not a democracy anymore. Mm -hmm. Two years ago, there was an impeachment against former President Dilma, yeah. but uh, we said that uh, that was a parliamentary coup because uh, she didn't commit any crime. And then uh, they also arrested Lula, the Lula, opposition, yeah. although there is no evidence against him. Yeah. So he was still the most popular Politician He's in Brazil, popular, yeah. Popular. Even you know when he was in jail, he's still in jail, and uh, so they wasn't able. Uh, he wasn't able to run. So there was this political space created that uh, opened then the opportunity for a far right candidate, yeah. uh, Bolsonaro, uh, to occupy this space, and uh, someone uh, who is openly racist, uh, sexist, homophobic. So, uh, you know, it's like the new uh, fascist style of yeah. politician. Yeah. And uh, it's a disastrous in Brazil, you know. Yeah. They are uh, cutting um, all social programs uh, related to human rights, yeah. to education, to health care, to housing and science. Uh, and then what we are doing now here in New York City is uh, protesting an invitation that uh, the Brazilian Chamber of Commerce uh, has uh, to receive him here at the uh, American uh, Museum of Natural yeah. History. Yeah. So for May 14th, so we are asking people to protest and uh, to write to the museum. Uh, the email is communications at ANH, uh, American uh, <laughs> Museum of Natural History, uh, NH, sure. uh, dot org. Yeah, yeah, I will put it. Uh, exactly. So it. anyway, to write to the yeah, museum absolutely. because he just announced that uh, he's going to cut the science budget in half. Yeah. He, uh, he is uh, saying that uh, indigenous communities shouldn't have any no right, right to land. No, no. Uh, he's saying that uh, he's going to expand monocropping of soy in the Amazon and will open the Amazon for Trump, for the U.S. government. Yeah, so but every legislation, so now everybody can, I mean, not everybody, but people, the, the, the businesses are going to the Amazon and cut the trees, who are, and, and it's go at very high speed. Yes, action. yes, he is saying that uh, we should allow, uh, Brazil should allow uh, monocropping yeah. in the Amazon. That uh, So, and the indigenous people are saying that uh, this will be, will represent a genocide for indigenous yeah. communities. Yeah, because they're going to lose the land. Yeah, yeah, so it's a very dangerous situation. And uh, of course, it, this will have an impact in the region as well, in other countries, because you have an alliance of uh, extreme far-right governments that uh, would be aligned with Trump. So we need to resist this here as well. So, yeah, so what, how, I don't know, I mean, how does this happen? Because really, in South America, it was a, a very strong development between Argentina, between Bolivia, uh, and, and, and Brazil. I mean, it was a strong development. And then suddenly, uh, suddenly something switched. Yeah. And, and yeah. So well, I think that uh, we see very similar patterns. Yeah. For example, we had the coup in Honduras, yeah. right? And then the situation, the human rights situation got uh, horrible there, mm -hmm. got much worse. Mm -hmm. We had the assassination of uh, Berta Caster, yeah. a very well-known 
activists yeah. from Honduras. Mm -hmm. And then we had the parliamentary coup in Paraguay yeah. against President Lugo. Uh -huh. Also, you know, they created some lies yeah. to, to have a coup against yeah. him. And then we had the coup in Brazil. And then uh, what is happening now is that uh, all Latin American governments use Venezuela as an external enemy. Yeah. And this is something fabricated here from the from US. The, US of the main, of course, the main objective yeah. is oil, is it's access to oil. Yeah. In Brazil, it's the same. The US government and the oil corporations want to have access to the offshore mm -hmm. oil mm -hmm. reserves in yeah. Brazil. Um, so, you know, that is this uh, uh, image that uh, uh, we need to prevent countries to become like Venezuela. But Venezuela is a rich country that uh, was also uh, growing, and uh, now it's under and economic reactive, sanctions. A lot of, of the country of South America came out of poverty, I mean, very deep poverty, because of the support of Venezuela, who helped to, uh, to, to organize and fortify uh, South America. Exactly. And then, then, uh, so now is are in the middle of a disaster situation. Yeah, also uh, Haiti, for example. Haiti. Venezuela you know, was providing yeah. energy to Haiti, even yeah. to low communities yeah. here in New yeah. York. In New York, in the Bronx, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So now, you know, I think it's also a way, because there was also a, an alliance uh, to, uh, to have uh, more trade within the region. And for Brazil, for example, it's very important to have good relationships with Venezuela because Brazil exports industrial products and, uh, with, and the relation with the U.S. is mostly to export basic commodities, raw materials. Mm -hmm. So it's type of a, you know, a neo-colonial type of, type of relationship. Yeah. And uh, before, uh, our countries had a much more independent foreign policy, mm -hmm. and now they're all more aligned to Trump, which is very dangerous. Mm -hmm. I have a, a question that was a little bit connected to here with the Me Too movement. How does, did you see any correlation in, uh, in, in South America and in Brazil, or, or we know in Argentina it was a strong uh, woman coming out on the street with, I don't know if it was like millions of women on the street, but it was a very strong movement. Um, I get people here from uh, uh, Women's Strike and they were describing the, 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 the landscape there. So any, um, any information, any vision of, of something like this? Yes, uh, yes, for sure. In, in Argentina, there are very strong feminist movements. You know, uh, millions of uh, people took the street yeah. to, uh, to defend abortion rights. Yeah. And then, of course, the Madres de la Plaza de Mayo, yeah, yeah. they're uh, oh, very, yeah, so yeah. very important yeah. movement. The Abuelas just found the uh, 129 um, granddaughter. Uh, so it's a very important oh. movement that uh, they now have been struggling for many yeah. years for memory and for justice. And in Brazil, we had a movement called uh, Ele Não, okay. which is not him. Mm -hmm. So it was also very large. Okay. It was against Bolsonaro. And uh, they put this hashtag uh, in a Facebook group, and uh, in one week, uh, there were like uh, four million oh. members, you know, and uh, also very large demonstrations saying not him, not him, ele really, no, uh, because of course it has a history of being sexist and uh, has a horrible uh, uh, discourse about women. Uh, so I think that uh, that that is resistance in the region. I think it's important for people to understand that. Uh, uh, he, Bolsonaro only won because Lula is a political prisoner. Yeah. So also uh, Adad, Fernando Haddad, who was the candidate, the Workers' Party candidate, only had 40 days to campaign because until the last minute, um, yeah. yeah, Lula was hoping that yeah. he was still going to be able yeah, to yeah. run. So, uh, yeah, Haddad just had 40 days and uh, got 44 million votes. And uh, Bolsonaro, what happens in Brazil is that you have all the mainstream media supporting the right-wing parties. It's almost because like... Private terrorist media companies. Yeah, it's almost like we, all, we only have Fox News. Exactly. This is the yeah. comparison. Yeah. 
Also, you have uh, you had we had a very strong fake news campaign on social media, and uh, some people say that probably that also came from here with the support of uh, and advice of uh, Steve Bannon. Yeah. And uh, also, you have the evangelical yeah, churches. So it's really difficult. There is a lot of uh, manipulation, yeah. mani media manipulation. An organization with a lot of financing who is really strong. Yes, for coming, sure. Coming, I would say, to a situation. Yeah. Um, anything you want to add to, we have very few minutes left. Anything you want to, to add to, um, to the issue of Brazil and how you see coming in the, in the few well, I think whatever happens in Brazil now will have a, an effect in the whole region and here in the U.S. as well. Of course, the destruction of the Amazon will have uh, severe impacts yeah, on climate change. Yeah. And uh, so I think we need to resist. We need to understand that uh, these are global issues. These are not isolated issues. And uh, we need to understand and uh, try to create more international solidarity. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for your patience. That was Face to Face, and please keep watching your news on Presenza.com, and hope to see you very soon. Thank you.